Hello world of the internet, Zachary Alexander Reed here on the Genesis Belt, and as I said, yeah, <laughs> as I said earlier, I'm going to start playing all of the Batman games this season, and I'm going to try to uh, beat them. The first one on the agenda is Batman, so let's take a quick look here. Let's see, this game was inspired by the Tim Burton film Batman from 1989. Alright, so this game came out in 1990, uh... And that's pretty much all we need to know. So there you go. I never played the first Batman game for the Genesis. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it and play some Batman. All right, so the first thing we see is the Sega logo and then the title of Batman. And uh, since this is my first play, I'm just gonna go in blind. The first level is Gotham City Streets and Wow, this actually looks pretty good. It's got a lot of uh, browns and grays, but the detail is uh, fairly decent for 1990, I guess. You immediately see that your score is at the bottom left of the screen, your health is at the bottom center of the screen, and your Batarang supply is in the bottom right corner, as well as your life counter. Later in the game, when you get to a boss, their health is shown right above Batman's. No confusion there, really. Look at Batman's walk cycle, it's great. He struts the entire time. He's just like, yeah, I'm I'm Batman. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna strut my way and and one punch you, just one punch you the whole way. All right, so the first level in this game is a a pretty basic walk in the park, uh, and I think that's to allow you to you know fiddle with the controls. I mean, one of the buttons is just punch, and all of the enemies in this first level are one one punch. So the controls are pretty easy to figure out. C is jump, B is to punch, and A is to throw a batarang. Holding down and B allows you to duck and shin kick the enemy to death. If you hit C again while jumping, you can do a somersault jump. Also, if you hold up and C instead of just jumping, Batman fires a grappling hook into the air, which you find out later gets Batman to, you know, to higher platforms he couldn't jump to. Batman's punches are a little short to connect in this game, so it takes a while to gauge how close you need to be to an enemy to land a hit, you could just shin kick enemies the entire way through, and that seemed to work for me for most of the game. There are also three power-ups in this game, one being a boost to your Batarangs, another being a health boost, and finally, an extra life. After figuring out the basics of the first level, Batman struts his way through some throwaway street thugs and fights the first boss. Alright, time to fight the first boss. So when you get all the way to the end of the first level, you end up in a regular old street with a couple of health boosters in each corner, and then the first boss starts working his way up from the right side. He looks like he's some kind of boxer. The first thing I did was just unload all of my batarangs to him to see how much damage the batarangs can do to a boss. And it's not too bad. It basically about as strong as a punch, if not slightly stronger. After I ran out of all of my batarangs, he finally started closing the gap and showed me what he was made of. This guy can throw a flurry of punches, he can throw a few uppercuts, and he can also duck under the batarangs if you're not ducking as well while throwing them. All you gotta do is keep your distance, so he uses his rush move to close in and just shin kick him back. A lot of times he'll just use it over and over and you can get some real damage in before he switches to another move. There are also two health power-ups in this battle, which float around in each corner so you can beat this boss and grab a power up to have a full health before the next level. Okay, so the next level is Axis Chemical Factory. Pause for a moment. How much you want to bet that in this factory, there are conveyor belts that you have to walk on? All right, so we jump into the Axis Chemical Factory and the first thing we see is more brown and more gray. Not a lot of color in this game so far. Okay, so I jump over some boxes and a couple of thugs that can do some slide kicks just kind of go on by me. Jump up onto some pipes and there's some laser enemies into the wall that can zap you, but they're one punch as well. Then the pipes bust and uh, I can't figure out where to go. Where do I go? What do I do? These boxes are too high for me to jump over. Okay, so these guys just keep coming. And is there anything I can grapple onto? I, I can't get past these daggone boxes. Is there anything? Well, there we go. There we go. So I go ahead and jump over some boxes, more lasers, more running men. Apparently they won't hurt you if their heads touch you, but if they slide kick into you, you're gonna get hit. I just stay on top of the boxes while they run. 
Then there's a short climbing segment where you gotta use the grappling hook to move back and forth through some platforms with lasers and bazookas. After that, there's a few conveyor belts. Oh, oh, and there it is. The conveyor belts called it. Give me a, give me a, give me a penny. Go all the way to the left at the top and there's this guy who's got a full health bar above him. So that's nice. Past the conveyor belts, there's this pit that you drop into, another bazooka guy and some batarangs. Jumping over the pipes, jumping over the pipes. More lasers, more bazooka guys. Alright, so once I got to the end of the lower level, you have to climb back up to the medium level. Mm -hmm. And then finally, some more conveyor belts. Then there's this last room that you have to get through, where there's more running men, another bazooka guy, and another laser. Because of this hallway at the end that's congested, it's kind of frustrating getting through it while trying to not get hit. At the end of the hallway, there's a, an, a room with gears and it... <sighs> game over. I gotta start the game over again. Oh. No. It just starts me over at the beginning of the level. That's not so bad that it doesn't make me have to start the whole game over again. So fast forward through this level once again. I can't figure out how to get past this last room without getting hit. So there's this guy in the top right corner with a gun shooting at you. Just jump into him and... That was easy. This guy must be the guy from the movie who fell into the vat of acid and turns into the Joker. Alright, so that's level 2 done. Cool, level 2 was only 10 minutes. Oh, oh shit. All right, so level three, Flugelheim Museum. Flugelheim, Flugel, Flugelheim Museum. Flugelheim Museum. Okay, so we've upgraded from brown and gray to PP yellow and doo doo brown. Cool. Your biggest obstacle here is going to be the chandeliers. And then these big old axe guys, which take eight kicks. You've got one shot enemies and then like eight shot enemies. And then moving platforms. I'm going to probably fall a lot in this level. Great. Some chandeliers don't fall on you. I want that extra life. The only way to get this extra life right here is to jump from that platform. A lot of climbing, and at the top is this big old axe dude. And this jump is wider than it looks, and hey, cool! Every time you fall, that health respawns. So whenever a, a, an item comes off of the screen and you go back, you can just respawn the item. And this battle right here with this axe man in this pit really sucks. Platform jumping, platform jumping, do 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 more platform jumping. Once you get to the top of the museum, you end up in a room with a bunch of paintings on the wall and a second level that you can jump onto, which is pretty cool. Then finally, the last room. I know it's the last room because there's a health pickup and that means boss time. And he's dead. That was easy. But that wasn't the actual boss of this level. He was more like a mini boss before the boss. The actual boss of this match is a large man with a boon box who just kind of shovels his way toward you. Hey there, guy. You gonna... You gonna do anything? Then you got Joker up there on the on the balcony up there, just kind of uh, chilling, watching the whole match. Yeah, not a very smart recruitment plan he's got. After we beat the big old boombox boy, we're greeted to a little scene here where Batman uses his grappling hook and takes the blonde lady away from the Joker. All right, Flugenheim Museum is done. Next, uh, next level, please. Oh, I get to drive the Batmobile! So, through the Gotham City street segments, you drive the Batmobile. The punch button allows you to fire a gun, and the batarang button allows you to fire some rockets. However, you don't continuously fire by holding down the button. You have to press the button every single time you want to fire. After a while, this can wear your thumb out. This level seems to be pretty easy at first. Most of the cars only take a few hits to destroy. But the thing is, if you get hit once, it does a ridiculously huge amount of damage to your car. Sometimes you get hit once and you die. Sometimes you get hit and it stuns your car and you can't drive it anywhere, so you get hit again. So yeah, this part of the game is not very fun. I love driving the Batmobile, but... Oh, God. God, this part is just so frustratingly difficult. This level's really long, too. This level is also different because when you die, you don't 
continue where you left off, like in the on foot levels. In this one, when you die, your car resets and starts a little further back from where you died. This is a little frustrating, but I mean, whatever, you know? All right, so I get to the end of the level and get to the boss and instantly die. Thankfully, when I die, it takes me right back to the beginning of the boss battle. And then I die again. Well, that was a jump in difficulty. Seriously, I start the boss battle and he just annihilates me as soon as I start. So I'll have to be careful when I get to him again at the end of the level. Aw, oh, but now I've got to start this shitty level all over again. Thankfully, this time it doesn't take me so long to get to the boss. This time, I basically just kind of chill at the bottom of the screen and fire rockets at him until he dies. Alright, and then once I beat the boss, that's the end of the level, right? No. No, it's not. Once you defeat the boss on the Batmobile section, you then drop right back into the brown and gray streets of Gotham. Only instead of fighting generic thugs this time, you gotta fight flipping clowns. Alright, cool. Joker, clowns. Makes sense. This is a game about the Joker. And, uh, he's got his clowny goons. His clowny, clowny, clowny goons. His clowny, clowny goons. His clowny goons. These clowns can do backflips and jump kicks, but overall they're pretty easy to beat. But as soon as you get to the first pitfall in the first platforming section, you're greeted by these little fat clowns that spit fire. Because it was the 90s and fat bad guys have to always blow fire. Fuck, died again. Alright, so I died all my lives and it's time to continue and... Oh! Oh no! Oh no! I, I guess you've got limited continues in this game. So I get through level 1, no deaths, no problems. And then I get to the second level, and I die all but one of my lives. But back to the Flugenheim Museum. Alright, Flugenheim Museum. Hopefully I've learned enough to not die in this level so much. Apparently not! You know, I really wish that Batman could run instead of walk in this game. His jumping animation is faster than his walk cycle. And I really don't like this level at all. These fucking pitfalls. And the chandeliers in this level really kind of piss me off. They only hit Batman. If a chandelier falls on you, oh, it's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot Batman. Despite all of my frustration and difficult times with the Flugenheim Museum, I did manage to get to the first boss again and Batarang'd him to death again. Now I'm back to the boss at Flugenheim Museum and I beat him with Batarangs last time instead of letting him do any of his attack animations. So this time I figured, let's go ahead and see what this boss does. The first thing he does when I approach him is throw his boombox at me. Was this guy in the movie? This guy decides to just try to robo-tackle my ass into oblivion and constantly misses. His second attack is a diving body slam, which also is pretty ineffective. You can basically just dodge the attack and punch him after he lands, or kick him. After beating him, we're treated to the cutscene again, and we're back into the Gotham City streets. This is my favorite part of the game. Despite how much this level sucks, it does have some pretty catchy music. After dying a hefty amount of lives, I still do manage to get to the boss at the end of this Batmobile section, and right back to the clowns. Okay, time to take out some clowns, and this time I think I'm ready. This level has a good deal of platforming with enemies sitting right there on the edge. Gotta love that trope in a platforming game. What? Oh, great, so the clowns that do flip kicks have iframes while they're in the air. So the only way you can hit these guys is if they land. You have to hit them right when they're on the ground, otherwise they're completely invincible throughout the rest of their animation. This wouldn't be difficult if it also wasn't apparent that they only have like two or three frames while they're on the ground before they jump again, so it's pretty difficult to hit them when they land. Dead! Dead! Dead. Dead. Fucking dead! Come on, come on, I've only got one life left! <laughs> it 
Eventually, I do figure out the timing and kill all of the clowns in this level this time. Alright, I finally got to the end of the level. Now it's time to fight the boss. This boss basically just jumps around and bum rush you with some scimitars. He's dual wielding instead of single wielding like the last guy in the Flugenheim Museum. He can do a little jump attack and then he can also bum rush you with the scimitars. So the only way I've figured out to hit him is at the end of his jump, as soon as he lands, try to get right next to him and then kick him. Or, after he does his scimitar rush attack, he's got about a second to recharge before he can jump or do another attack. Alright, finally, new level. Let's see what's next. In the sky over Gotham. Oh god. Is this a flying segment? Sure enough, the next segment is a flying segment. You fly the Batwing in a rail shooter style level where you have to defend yourself against a bunch of helicopters. Dude, I love rail shooters. Rail shooting is one of my favorite genres of gaming from like the 90s. It's just like the Batmobile section, only dumber. Believe it or not, this level is a lot harder than the Batmobile level. The Batwing is very slow to move vertically, and once again you have to hit the button every single time you want to fire a shot. On top of things, your enemies are helicopters that fire homing rockets and it's really, really hard to dodge because your Batwing is so big. On top of that, you've got about five more helicopters coming up behind that one firing more missiles. So basically this level boils down to memorization of where the enemies spawn. There's also these inflatable clowns that you can shoot and blow up, but they seem to pose no threat as far as I can tell. After a few deaths, I do manage to make it to the boss, which is just another really big helicopter. But this one can fire a whole bunch of missiles in a row at the same time. Unfortunately, when I get to the boss, he annihilates me. At least I have another continue to fight him with but I have to go through the entire level again to fight him instead of starting at the boss again like usual. Dead. 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 Time to start over again. Nigga. Alright, so I go ahead and start the game up again for a fourth time. Once again, I get through the first level without dying, and I also get through the second level without dying a single life as well. Now back to the Flugenheim Museum. I beat Flugenheim Museum with the only dying one time. Time for the Batmobile part. This time I decided to stick to the top half of the road and it carried me throughout the entire level. I managed to beat the boss and on to the clowns. I managed to get through the clowns pretty easily and then get to the boss. And then I lose a continue on him, but thankfully when you die on an on foot section of the game, you can just start right back at the boss. Like in the Batmobile sections when you die you get held back but in the on-foot beat-em-up sections, it just lets you keep going. So, the easy parts are the beat-em-up parts. <laughs> the hard parts are the other parts that are not the beat-em-up parts. Why even put that in there? Why put flying segments and driving segments in a beat-em-up game? Uh. Whatever. Anyways, I go ahead and beat this boss this time. <sighs> okay, back to the Gotham skies. Back to the Batwing, and back where I left off. Here we go. Rockets, helicopters, fucking clowns. All right, back to the boss. Honestly, this boss doesn't seem too hard. All you've got to do is just stay out of his firing range or the trajectory path of his rockets and, you know, you're pretty much fine. I didn't even die on him this time. Finally beat this one. Next level! The next level is the Gotham Cathedral. Is this supposed to be a cathedral? This level is divided into two sections. You've got your upper level and then you've got the lower level. There's a bunch of enemies with guns in the way. You can jump down from the bridge or you can grapple right back up to it depending on what you want to do. After a few minutes of trudging through the bridges and the pillars and getting rid of all these guys with guns, 
I finally make it to the first boss of this area. It's the guy with the scimitar again from the Flugenheim Museum. And this time, I don't have a lot of batarangs to take him out with, so this will be the first time that I find out what his attack patterns are. So let's see what this guy does. If you get too close on this guy, he swings his scimitar in front of him and you can't hit him. He can also jump back a little bit to try to dodge your attacks. He doesn't seem to be too hard, all you've got to do is just keep your distance from him when he swings his scimitar and you can just kind of jump into him and kill him that way. Alright, I beat the Flugenheim scimitar guy again, let's see what's next. Alright, so the level doesn't end after you beat him, it just keeps going. As the level continues, I have to fight a bunch of clowns that shoot fireballs again, which are pretty easy to dispatch at this point, and then I just jump right into the next boss who's the boxer from the first level again. After defeating him, the level continues once again. Now I've got to fight off men with bazookas. Or rather, just a man with a bazooka. After killing him, it's straight on to the next boss. It's the scimitar guy who jumps. Alright, finally killed that guy. Now it's time to move on. The very next section is just a bunch of dudes on more pillars with guns. After those guys, I've got to fight the wife beater with the boombox again. After beating him, I'm finally done. Or am I? Because the level continues, now it's a climb up the cathedral tower to get to the Joker. The enemies in this level are a bunch of red-coated dudes with TNT. They throw sticks of dynamite at you in order to try to damage you. It's pretty avoidable, until they're on a platform above you that you have to get up on. Oh, I fell down the tower. So there's pitfalls in the tower. Of course there are. You have to go back and forth between these two pillars right here. There's also these dragon heads that hang out around the walls. They can shoot fire at you while you're trying to jump up onto the next platform, so you gotta be careful. And also, every once in a while, you'll see a little mine hanging on one of the platforms. If you touch it, you explode and you die. Near the end of the level, there's just a few of these platforms that fall under you if you don't jump quick enough. There's just so much climbing in this level. You have to climb up one tower, move over to the next tower, climb up that tower, move over to the next tower again, climb up the next tower. There's a lot of climbing, a lot of grapple hooking in this level. So I continue to grapple and climb and grapple and climb and kill bad guys and grapple and climb until eventually I grapple and climb to the point where the level just ends. Alright, now I'm at the top of the cathedral and let's see what's there. It's the Joker! So the Joker has a long ass pistol that he can fire a blast of, well, energy or a big fiery bullet depending on what you want to call it, just like in the movie. He can also grab a ball of energy and slam it into the ground so it comes into you. What? What is this? What? That doesn't happen in the movie! F fuck. Alright, so I made it to the Joker last time. This time, I think I can go ahead and beat the game. Here we go. Oh. 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 All right, here we go. All right, I've made it to the top of the cathedral. It's time to fight the Joker. I can beat him this time. I don't know if there's any real strategy to beating the Joker here. I just kind of played it like I would a fighting game. Yeah! That's how it's done! So the Joker is beaten! Bye!
Joker. I love how it describes the Joker's body right here. It says, Joker is slammed down to the ground from the top stair of the cathedral. Now, Joker looks dizzy with his face ice cold, yet his teeth stuck out and his eyes directed aimlessly toward the star-sparkling night sky. He's dead. Make no mistake, he's dead. And that's Batman for the Sega Genesis. What do I think about it? Um, it's pretty good, actually. Uh, I liked Batman's animation. I liked the attacks that he could do. They were simple, uh, but versatile. The enemies were, uh, pretty simple, so they put them in spots on the platforming segments that made them a little more difficult. The graphics were pretty good. They weren't spectacular. Uh, it didn't have the... Uh, a bright color palette. This is a very dark looking game. I think it was supposed to be that way. The tunes are fine. The music is fine. It's not bad. It's not ear rape, but it's not particularly memorable. Um, pretty good, just not great. Uh, the things that I didn't like about this game, uh, I didn't like the Batmobile segment, and I definitely didn't like the uh, Batwing segment. And the Batmobile segment is way too long. The fact that you have to continuously hit the button for every individual shot for your gun can really tire out your thumb after a while. But overall the game is not really that hard. I beat the game in like five playthroughs and it's a pretty easy game. So Batman for the Sega Genesis, mediocre game basically. Um, mediocre graphics, mediocre music, uh, mediocre gameplay. It's just overall a mediocre that's not very long, so you, you could beat it in a day, which I did. Uh, this has been Zachary Alexander Reed on the Genesis Belt. I just beat Batman for the Sega Genesis. Tune in next time for part two of all of the Batmans where I play the next Batman game, whichever one it is.